The Azadi Stadium in Tehran rarely sees European teams. Years of sanctions and isolation since the 1979 Islamic Revolution have meant that the Iranian national team, despite being one of the best in Asia, struggles to find European national sides to play Team Meli. On Thursday the 23rd of March 2023, that changed. Iran played Russia, a diplomatic 1-1 draw in front of a full house, but for once Iran's isolation wasn't the biggest issue. It was Russia's. Since Russia invaded Ukraine, firstly in 2014, but in far greater and deadlier numbers on February the 24th, 2022, the country has been isolated politically, economically and culturally. The Russian national team had been due to play Poland in a 2022 World Cup playoff, but the invasion of neighbouring Ukraine made that game impossible. Poland said they would refuse to play, as did Russia's potential opponents in the final playoff round, Sweden and the Czech Republic, forcing football's governing bodies to act. Russia was suspended from UEFA and FIFA. The men's team were out of the World Cup, the women's team were out of the European Championships. And Russia's club teams could no longer play in the Champions League, Europa League or Conference League. The Champions League final, due to be played at the Gazprom Arena in St. Petersburg, was moved to the Stade de France in Paris. UEFA's lucrative sponsorship deal with Gazprom was cancelled too. One year on, nothing has changed. As a country under sanctions, Russian club teams have limited options in the transfer market. FIFA imposed rules that allowed foreign footballers to leave unilaterally and suspend their contracts until the summer of 2023. Russian clubs remain banned from competing in lucrative European competitions, and last year Russia was removed from the draw for the 2024 European Championship qualification. There was, however, one prize Russian football valued above all else. It's important for us to take part in the 2026 World Cup qualifiers, said Alexander Dukov, president of the Russian Football Union. With Russia's invasion of Ukraine continuing and unlikely to end anytime soon, a novel solution was mooted at the end of 2022 by Dukov. Could Russia leave UEFA and try to qualify for the 2026 World Cup finals by joining the Asian Football Confederation instead? Politics is in first place in Europe. Football has faded into the background, he said. If we don't do this now and later decide on the transition, then the next tournament for the national teams will be a cycle from 2027. And the idea isn't as far-fetched as it sounds. For one, Russia is vast. 77% of the country, everything east of the Ural Mountains, is in Asia, even if its political, cultural and demographic heartland is in Europe in its west. And there is some precedent. Russia wouldn't be the first country to swap confederations. In 2006, Australia, which had grown tired of smashing Pacific opposition as part of the Oceania Football Confederation, successfully petitioned to join the Asian Football Confederation. When the Soviet Union broke up in 1991, so too did the Soviet national team. Its newly formed constituent republics straddling Asia and Europe had a choice to make. The national teams of Armenia, Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan chose to be part of European football. But Uzbekistan, Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan all joined the Asian Football Confederation. The most analogous example though is Israel. Israel was a founding member of the Asian Football Confederation, but there were problems from the start. Arab and Muslim countries frequently refused to play them, leading to a farcical situation where they almost qualified for the 1958 World Cup without playing a single game after Indonesia and then Sudan refused to play. FIFA intervened and arranged a draw of all the European teams that finished second in their qualification group. Eventually, a playoff was arranged with Wales, which Wales won 4-0 on aggregate. Still, Israel did make it to the 1970s finals as Asia's representative before being kicked out altogether in 1974 after a proposal by Kuwait to expel the Israel Federation. They spent the next two decades in the wilderness, occasionally playing qualifying matches in UEFA and the OFC. Eventually, they joined European World Cup qualification in 1991 for USA 94. They were admitted as permanent members of UEFA in 1994, where they've remained ever since. And this might be why Russia joining the AFC could have some legs. Russia is a pariah for most of the world, especially in the West. Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine has cost hundreds of thousands of lives and seen his country ostracized from the global economy. Putin has also now been indicted for war crimes by the International Criminal Court, 
meaning countries party to the ICC are compelled to arrest him if he ever enters their territory. But this won't happen in most of Asia. Apart from a handful of states, virtually every country in Asia is not a signatory to the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court and does not recognize its jurisdiction. And since the start of Russia's most recent invasion of Ukraine, Asian countries have deepened their economic and political relations with Russia. China's leader Xi Jinping's recent visit to Moscow further illuminated Russia's pivot to the east. China and India have been buying Russian oil and gas, and their combined purchases at a heavily discounted rate overtook all Russian exports to the EU at the end of 2022. The UAE and Saudi Arabia have maintained close ties, and Iran, Russia's latest friendly opponent, has been selling Russia arms, including the Shahid Kamikaze loitering drone, which has caused mayhem and thousands of civilian casualties in Ukraine. There is certainly a path for Russia to join the AFC if they voted for it, and powerful members have already backed the move. If FIFA and the AFC allow it, and there's a benefit for Asia, then I don't think there's a problem with that. The Saudi sports minister, Prince Abdulaziz bin Turki Al Faisal, told AFP of the Asian Football Confederation's annual congress in February 2023. FIFA would ultimately have to agree for Russia to compete in the World Cup if they qualified, and the Russian Football Union has left the door open for negotiations with UEFA, calling for a working group to sort out their membership issues. But any move to normalize Russian sport, including an IOC proposal to allow some Russian and Belarusian athletes to compete at the 2024 Olympics in Paris, has been fiercely opposed by Ukraine and its allies. In the meantime, Russia does have a tournament to prepare for. In March 2023, Russia was invited to compete in the Central Asian Football Association Championship in June. The tournament will take place in Bishkek and Tashkent and feature Iran, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan and Afghanistan. The organizers have said Russia has accepted their invitation and Russia has said that they're considering it. Still. It's all a long way from the summer of 2018 and the high point of Russian football, when the country hosted the World Cup finals. Putin was there for the first game, Russia versus Saudi Arabia, watching the host nation beat the Saudis 5-0, next to an exuberant FIFA president Gianni Infantino and Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Five years later, Russia is a European pariah, and as long as that remains the case, their footballing future might lie in Asia. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.